This conference will now be recorded. This it's conference okay. will now be recorded. Great. So the reason for centering practice, guys, is just for everyone to kind of take a breath, stop from the craziness that they've experienced today or in the last week. This is quite a good centering practice because if you're not a yogi or you don't like deep breaths and mindful practice, it's just something to kind of bring your awareness back to its center. So you can be comfortably seated and we're going to start with sitting down. I want you to close your eyes and just take a few deep breaths, ideally breathing in through the nose, holding that breath for three counts and then exhaling really loudly through your mouth and letting that tension and that anxiousness that's in your body really escape. So it should look something like this, breathe in, Hold and breathe out. So if you just do a few rounds of that breath, maybe two or three, just kind of feeling your body in the chair, ignoring the cell phone that might be ringing or the emails that are popping through. And when you've done a few of those breaths, I want you to very gently open your eyes because this centering practice involves all the senses. So the first thing I'd like you to do is concentrate on five things around you that you can see. So maybe it is the grass, if you're sitting outside, maybe it's your cell phone that's sitting next to you, maybe it's the TV that's in front of you, anything that is in your immediate space, I want you to look at that thing, acknowledge it, and just find five of those. You can say it out loud, you can say it in your head. I then want you to look for four things you can physically touch without moving. So whether it's picking up that cell phone, grabbing a pen, touching the TV remote, maybe it's petting an animal that's sitting on your lap or your baby, whichever is, is your closest loved one. And really touch, embrace, feel that item in your space. Then I want you to look for three things you can hear. So listen carefully. Is it the kids fighting with each other in the room next door? Is it the cars whizzing past if you live in the city? Is it the birds if you are out in the, in the wilderness? But what are three things that you can really hear? And try and make sense of them. Then I want you to move on to two things you can smell. So maybe it's a candle that you were burning. Uh, maybe it's a fresh cup of coffee that you've just made. Maybe it's the lunch that you ate and you can smell. Maybe it's cookies or cakes that you baked earlier. So two things you can smell. And the last thing is one thing you can taste. So Maybe you have just had a sip of your coffee or your herbal tea. Maybe you had a little bit too much garlic with your lunch. <laughs> you can taste the garlic. But just something you can taste. And I want you to take another two deep breaths in through the nose. Hold for three, two, one and then loud exhale through the mouth, releasing the body. And you can open your eyes now if your eyes were closed, but what you should be feeling, and I, I almost don't like saying this because everybody must feel what they're feeling, but I hope that most of you are feeling a little bit calmer, your heart rates come down a little bit, or the panic from the emails that you were dealing with earlier or the clients, has eased and you're feeling a little bit more centered and a little bit more focused. Because what I wanna take you through next is actually the, the person who created the center in practice, her name's Candace Clark. She is a yoga um, teacher and trauma specialist in Cape Town. And um, so if any of you want to look at more of her stuff, um, um, please give her a follow. 
Um, she has got trauma and psychology counseling as well. And I think in this time, this particular topic is, is becoming more and more um, needed and more and more prevalent. So that kind of takes me to the topic of what we're going to be speaking to today, and that's COVID and trauma. So, you know, when I, when I say the word trauma, people automatically think of stress, danger, anxiety, um, something horrific, something criminal, um, invasion of privacy. But actually, COVID and what we're going through at the moment is the perfect storm for our bodies to experience trauma and even a burnout. Because really, all trauma is, is the emotional response to stress in the body. So you get stressed, it builds up over time, it becomes trapped in the body. It, it, it's a form of trauma, and it actually starts to affect different parts of our body. One of the biggest things being affected is our mental health. So we either start questioning what we're doing, we have a lot of self-doubt that creeps in, um, we start to feel tired and exhausted, or we flip on the other end and start cooking and baking up a storm and, and doing what we can. Um, your nervous system gets stimulated, and in fact, it actually gets overstimulated. And I want you to think about how COVID is showing up for you, because the first response is, you know, I'm anxious, I'm nervous, I don't know what's happening, this uncertainty is killing me. But how else is it showing up? You know, are you losing weight? Are you gaining weight? Are you um, getting headaches? Are you drinking more coffee? Are you drinking less coffee? Are your kids driving you mad? All of this adds to the experience we feel in our body. And that often translates into how we respond or rather react to certain situation. So I spoke about the nervous system being stimulated. And I wanted to talk to you very quickly about the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is the longest nerve in the body. It starts or stems from the brain and it runs through the main midline of the body. It's a very powerful nerve because it actually has the ability to mediate or balance the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is something I'll get to shortly. It's the main nerve that tells the body whether you should respond or you should react to a situation. And there is exercises you can do like vagal nerve toning, which I will show you a little bit later. And those things focus on just doing breath work like we did to start off the session, humming, which sounds weird, but humming helps with the vagus nerve. Um, exhaling, so anytime you breathe out and you exhale, and then any practice that allows you to focus on something because that immediately calms down your nervous system. So if we have a look at the difference between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system, it's quite interesting how these two separate nervous systems are integrated into one and how they're balanced by the vagus nerve. So I'm gonna take us through our sympathetic nervous system first because Nine times out of 10 in a situation like we're experiencing at the moment, this is the nervous system that's usually overstimulated. So this is your fight or flight nervous system. It's often where you get that rush and that power to urge forward and do something. It involves an excess secretion of adrenaline, often causes weight gain. So unfortunately, especially for women, Excess of adrenaline leads to an excess of the hormone cortisol, and those three, well, adrenaline, cortisol, and estrogen, don't play nicely together. So, unfortunately for women, that's often where a lot of our weight gain around the midsection comes from. And an overstimulated sympathetic nervous system is actually what causes disease. So if we look at the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the nervous system that usually gets ignited when we do things like breast work, mindfulness, yoga practice, lying flat on our back, we call this the nervous system that is focusing on rest or digest. So remember, if your fight or flight is being stimulated, things like your heart, your brain, and your limbs get stimulated so that you can think, get blood, and move. With the parasympathetic, it focuses on calming the body, 
The main focus goes to the digestive system because that's where we want to move um, food around and get energy from. It's the calm in the storm. It's also a great way to release toxin buildup in the body. It regulates weight or weight gain and it eases disease. So this is definitely a nervous system or part of the nervous system that we want to focus on stimulating more and calming down the sympathetic nervous system. So I suppose the question here is how do you know if your nervous system is not balanced? So I have a great exercise for us to do for us to understand what's happening with our vagus nerve. It's a quick exercise. I'm going to show you what it looks like and then you can do it yourself. You need to look up at something bright. So if you're outdoors, this can be the sun. If you're indoors, it can be a light bulb or a bright spot on your ceiling. You need to hum for four seconds and immediately swallow. So it will be looking up, humming, and swallow. As you can see, for me, that's extremely difficult to do. And it's because if the swallow is hard to do, your two nervous systems are not balanced. It usually means your uh, sympathetic nervous system, so your adrenaline, your fight or flight, is overstimulated. If you do the hum and you swallow and it's easy, then you've got a very good balancing of your two nervous systems as well as your vagus nerve. So well done for those of you that have got that right. For me, it's extremely painful. Um, so I need to make sure I'm doing a lot of vagal nerve toning. And this is something you can do through humming. Um, I've actually just started working with a voice integrated coach who's helping me with um, balancing my nervous system through using the power of my voice. A Little bit weird, but I'm giving it a go. Um, so for those of you that are feeling that difficulty when you swallow, there's a whole lot of other stuff that's connected to throat chakra and you know, communication and anxiety. A lot of us hold anxiety in our throat. So have a few seconds throughout the day and I hope that that manages to balance your nervous system. So let's talk about some trauma and how you can use what I'm sharing um, with you. So trauma, especially linked to COVID, can show up in different ways for different people. So these are things for you to look out for in yourself, but also in your team. So there can be two things. There can be a battle to slow down. So because you can't control stuff, you wanna make sure you're getting as much done as possible. So you make lists, you start baking. I'm seeing people who are baking that have never baked in their life, which is great because they're learning a new skill. But when I speak to those people, it's often because they need to feel in control of something. So if you look at my last point, it speaks to that. But Baking a cake, you have a recipe, you start it, a cake comes out, your family's happy, ta-da. That's a form of control. There can also be a battle to start anything. So you kind of, you know, I know I need to clean the gutters, but I'll do it tomorrow. I know I need to sort out the freezer, but I'll do it later. I know I need to start that project. I know I need to business plan. I know I need to get onto Dermalogica's digital platforms but there just isn't that urge to get it started, that's a form of trauma. Anxiety or frustration, especially with distance and working from home, so I'm not being rude there, WFH is working from home. Um, people don't realize the anxiety and frustration of not having boundaries between a workplace and a home place. Um, also not being able to connect with the people that you see on a daily basis not being able to touch clients if that's the industry that you're in, which we're in. Um, and also understanding what that anxiety and frustration looks like for each person in your team, because some will be quiet and some will be very vocal about it. There might be a feeling of being unable to breathe, move or exercise. Guys, one piece of advice I can give you is don't beat yourself up. Do what your body allows you to do. I'm a yogi, I used to practice yoga every day. I thought with the lockdown, I'm gonna be doing two sessions a day of yoga. I was so excited. If I've been on my mat three times in the whole of lockdown, it's been a lot. Because every time I get onto my mat, 
all I really want to do is lie in dead corpse pose, which is Shavasana on your back, or lie in um, child's pose, which is when you bent over with your arms in front of you. And that's okay, because that's what my body needs right now. So please don't beat yourself up about not being able to exercise, not walking in the mornings. It will come. Feeling guilty and worthless as you cannot control things or get things done. And this again explains the mental health discussion we were having earlier about you feel trapped, you feel paralyzed, you stop beating yourself up because you can't get things done. Just be okay with what you can do is what you can do. Um, and, and you've got to find your own groove. People can give you advice and, and, and tell you what to do, but at the end of the day, it's your mindset, it's your body. Um, I strongly recommend that you reach out to people who can help you, so who can just listen to you having a conversation. Um, and this is all a form of trauma. So what does this mean when we go back to work? And how do we start engaging with our teams when we go through this? So something you need to be mindful of is team building. I'm sure a lot of you, as soon as we're able to get back in our teams, we wanna hug each other, go for a team build, get the spirit back up there. You need to be mindful what that means for different people. Is your team introverts or extroverts? Do they get their energy from being around people or being around themselves? Um, and what type of team building is gonna speak to the team? Because the team you had before COVID and the team you're gonna have now, yes, they're the same people, but they are gonna have gone through their own journeys and we need to be mindful of that. The tone and words you use. I think this is very prevalent to us in yoga as well, is we often say, you know, sit comfortably. Well, what happens if I've had back surgery and sitting is not comfortable for me? It's okay. Maybe for some people it's not okay. Um, so just be mindful of the words that you're going to be using to engage with your team. And then touching, hugging and embracing. I am an absolute touch monster. My team knows this. I love hugging people. I love people touching my shoulders so I can connect with their energy. I know it's weird, but um, some people might not want that. You know, people have been on their own. They've had no contact for days and months now. To suddenly have someone hugging you or, or connecting with you, it could be very scary and it could also release a lot of emotions. So just be mindful of that and make sure that you are engaging with somebody in their personal space as they allow you to. So let's talk about some positions and some yoga principles that you can do with your team or for yourself. So yoga is healing and balancing. We've got different types of yoga. There's either a vinyasa flow, which is quite fast, but yin or restorative flow is probably the best thing for this time. It is extremely difficult if you like cardio as exercise, because often in a restorative class, you do about five to six poses for an hour. And not on repeat, you hold each pose for about 12 to 20 breaths. So for someone like me, it's an extremely difficult class to get through. But after the class, I feel incredible. Do what you can and whatever you feel like. Use your own home as props, which I'll take you through now. And do some grounding work. So grounding work is anything from having both feet flat on the ground with no crossing down the middle of your body. body or it can be walking barefoot on the grass and connecting to the earth. Incredible way to just get that tension out of your space, get you to refocus and get you to feel a little bit better. So the poses I'm gonna show you, not via video, I've taken photos so that we don't all embarrass ourselves, is to allow gentle stretches. It allows comfort and internal support. So that feeling of being um, almost hugged by yourself it calms the heartbeat and it immediately releases panic so the first two positions i have on the screen for ease one's called happy baby the one on the left and you can imagine why you're literally lying on your back with your legs up in the air like a little happy baby you're gonna put your arms to the inside of your legs and then grab the outside of your foot. And what this does is 
First of all, for a few of us, this position might be a little bit difficult to breathe. So it almost forces you to focus on your breath. It stretches out the hamstrings and the lower back, which if you've been sitting at a desk for the last couple of weeks, this is an amazing feeling. And what's really nice about this pose is that you can actually rock from side to side on your back, um, like a little happy baby. And that movement just creates almost a feeling of happiness that reminds me of when I was a kid for some reason. Um, and it's just a great way to release that built up tension in the lower part of your body. The wire picture on the right, um, this is a modified version of Shavasana or dead corpse pose. So basically here you're going to bend your knees up to the outside of your mat and make your knees fall inwards to touch each other and make a triangle. You will then hug your body, so arms crossed, shoulder to shoulder, and you will literally just lie there for 10 to 15 breaths. This pose has an incredible way of reassurance. It's an incredible pose for um, reiterating self-worth, making you validate yourself. Um, it's almost like giving yourself an internal hug. It's one of my favorite modified poses for Shavasana um, because it just has a way of completely releasing the built up tension down the sides of your spine, across your shoulders, and even um, on your hips. Because with people who've been sitting, we're carrying a lot of tension in our hips if we're not moving. The next positions for ease, so starting on the left hand side, um, this is a really simple pose. It's basically putting your legs up against a wall. Um, and here, this is an incredible way to make blood flow to your heart. So it's an um, elevation pose, getting your limbs above your heart. Um, in the picture, you can see that my arms are like a cactus, so they open on either side. Um, this is great for opening up the shoulders, um, especially if you've been hunched over a laptop or you've been cooking over the stove. I'm not sure what everybody's been doing. And again, lie here for as long as you can. It's an incredible restorative pose um, and it just, it really allows you to come back to your center. The middle photo is basically a twist. So one of your legs would be out straight. The other leg would be bent up and, and placed to the side over the leg and you would twist to the opposite direction. Again, twisting is incredible for the spine, especially with all of us sitting. It also opens up the lungs or twists the lungs and then reopens them. And for those of you who remember the Chinese um, face mapping that we used to do years ago, and um, the lungs is where we hold a lot of our emotions. So this is a great way for releasing emotional stress and tension. And the last photo on the right hand side is called your Bhattakonasana or butterfly pose. It's basically putting your legs in a bent butterfly shape. You can either sit upright or you can even lie down if your hips are allow you to do that and you've got strong hip flexors. I have got two pillows in this picture under each of my knees. So using home props, um, I've got very tight hip flexors and this is sometimes a painful pose for me. Um, so guys, any of these positions should not be painful. They should not cause tension. This isn't something that you breathe through. Yoga is not, oh, it's sore, just breathe through it. No, if it's sore, come out of that pose, get a cushion or a pillow to prop you up. Um, you can use your couch to lie back, put your legs up on the couch, nice and soft and supportive. Um, so there's lots of ways you can use your own home to support you in simple poses that look like they're doing nothing, but absolutely have a benefit on your mental health and on your general well-being. So thank you for listening to me talk about um, the principles of yoga and how you can apply them for yourself as well as back to your teams. Um, I suppose if, if anyone has questions, you can put your cameras on and um, put your hand up, ask me a question. I'm going to stop screen sharing now. There's also a chat box that you can type into at the top, which is a little bubble at the top of the screen. Otherwise, I can keep chatting if there's no questions. 
Okay, there's a question. Uh, it's just Pilani saying thank you. Yeah, I really That's enjoyed this. Um, I think I'm definitely going to work on my vagal nerve toning. I actually found it very difficult to swallow. And I'm actually going to try that happy position. It's very interesting to try. So yeah, anyone has any questions for us? If anyone would like to speak to me directly, I know this is a very um it's a very vulnerable and open subject to openly talk with 30 people that you've never met and can't see their faces. So if anybody would like to speak with me directly on any of these um, topics, you are welcome to um, ask your brand consultants for my contact details and um, brand consultants that are on the chat. I'm very happy for you to pass on my cell phone number. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy to help anybody who's got questions or would like me to guide them on the gurus and the yoga world in their areas. Okay, okay Jelana. Hey, Lana. Um, okay, perfect. But if there's no questions from anyone else further on, like Lauren said, you can contact her. Um, and then I just want to say thank you, Lauren. It was very informative, really enjoyed it. And yeah, we're looking forward to our next session that's next week, Monday at two o'clock. So everyone that wants to join in on that, more than welcome. The details will be sent out and reminders will be sent. So perfect. Thanks so much, everyone. Pleasure. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. <laughs>